Yo, what is going on guys and welcome to a new video and today we're gonna be talking about tips and tricks for solo queue players So uh, I've been playing this game for three and a half years and I think I have over 1,500 hours on this game So I obviously don't always play with a team and in most of my videos I pretty much solo queue and I'm not even gonna lie Solo queuing is a gamble like you're either gonna have to have good teammates Which is very random like you might just get the worst teammates ever Which is most likely the case so without wasting any more of your time. Let's get right into the first tip But before we do that I actually added one question at the end of the video for you guys to answer So be sure to listen very carefully and you guys will have no problem answering that question. So good luck All right, so the first tip has to do with operator selection. So I'm gonna be telling you guys what operators to use obviously they're all good i'm not even gonna lie. all of these operators are good but there are obviously some operators that are better with uh, teamwork and with the full squad because you really need communication with those operators to be you know to be successful to be honest and for solo queuing you need to go more for frags and have that certain mentality that you guys need to drop kills for you guys to win which is most likely which is most of the time not the case if you guys are on a full team obviously you need to drop kills but communication is way more important than you know fragging out so for the operators i'll just be telling you guys the operators that i will not recommend using just because they need a full squad to maximize their gadgets you know ability or whatever you want to call it just to make the best out of that operator you need a full squad so i'll just be telling you guys the operators that i wouldn't recommend and yeah let's get right into it the first operator i would most likely not recommend is montane I won't go into detail, obviously it's a shield, you don't really want to play shield and be a 3 speed when you're solo queuing. Uh, on the other hand, Blitz is a pretty good operator, uh, he's always good to use, so don't be fooled by the shields. Only Monty is not good to use in my opinion, if, you're, if you want to play shield. Then we go into the next operator that I would not recommend, it's most likely Ying, because with Ying, you really need uh, a team that drones out for you, and so you can flash them, push in, so I would not recommend playing ying because you don't really have the communication capital would also most likely be the case because once you drone out a person they most likely will move away from that spot so your arrows are kind of useless for the next operator that i would not recommend is probably gridlock just because she's a three speed and you don't want to run around with a three speed it's kind of kind of obvious you want to be fast you want to be agile with operators so you guys can get those frags so let's go over to the defenders so for the defenders who would i not recommend uh i mean they're all pretty much good one operator that i would not recommend is probably echo maestro is fine okay so echo so i would not recommend echo is just because you're always sitting in cams and when you're sitting in cams you want to give call outs and if you don't have you know if you never know sometimes the, the people that you're playing with are in the party and they don't even hear you when you're talking in game chat so there is really no point of playing an operator that will give you a lot of intel especially echo since he's a three speed you can't really roam around you can't really make those pl those really hard hitting plays on the other hand valkyrie is a very good option just because you can roam around with her, you can throw the cams outside, you can make cheeky runouts, you can do all of that stuff that will really annoy other players. Anyways, uh, Maestro is probably uh, also an operator that I would not recommend, but again, he's still very good because you can, uh, you can not only sit in your cams because he has a very good gun, and with your cams, you can actually annoy people with zapping them, you can even get rid of thermite charges, Hibana charges, and all that stuff, so I would recommend uh, Maestro as a solo queue operator, but uh, he's obviously not the best one. Clash is also an operator that I would 100% not recommend because you don't want to be playing a shield on defense when you're solo queuing. Just because when you're covering one door, some some guy might be behind you because when you're covering a door, there's mo most likely another door that has an angle on that door, if that makes any sense. So you don't want to be playing, you know, covering doors with your shield or anything like that because you will be too confident. Like you have a shield in front of your face, you're going to feel invincible and then you're just going to get shot in the back. It has happened so many times at 100% not recommend playing clash when you are solo queuing so i bet you guys do want to know what my favorite operators are to you know for attacking and defending so uh i would probably say ash sledge for attackers just because they're agile you can do your own things with them and on defense most likely jaeger bandit and valkyrie because you can get uh they have very good guns valkyrie not so much but you can really run out do those run outs which really annoy people and yeah i definitely recommend those uh three operators bandit jaeger and valkyrie 
All right, so the next thing I want to talk about is attacker's mentality. So the reason why mentality is so important, because I see a lot of people getting like uh, super scared uh, of solo queuing because they don't really get the information, they don't know what to do and all that stuff. But that is very easy to solve because every operator in the game obviously has a job to do. So once you guys are done with your job, you guys are pretty much free to die. Like you guys can go for more riskier plays. You guys can do things that will... Uh, you know get you frags but first you guys should 100% go for those like main breaches or you just do your job first and after that you guys can do uh, you guys can go for the frags you guys can go for the risky plays so for example if you're playing thermite you will obviously want to open up the wall the main wall first or whatever you want to open up to really to really distract the other team and to get them uncomfortable so another example would be buck so with buck you obviously have to go for a vertical gameplay so you're either going to open up the floor or the ceiling and try to really distract the players with your holes so they can't rotate as much with Hibana, you're gonna open up the hatches, breach the walls, uh, get open up the wall, and all of that stuff. And trust me, people will know what they have to do. Most of the, most of the people already know what their jobs will be if they play a certain operator. People that play, you know, Twitch, IQ, Ash, uh, let's see, Sledge and all those types of operas, Zofia, they will most likely just do their own thing and try to go for frags. So, if but if someone plays Thermite, they 100% know what they're going to do. If you're playing a Thermite, you 100% have the job to open up the wall. There's no excuse for you to run in first and die first. For Thatcher, you're going to have to help Thermite to open up the wall. There is pretty much... Uh, I don't think there's any excuse, especially in high ranks. People just do it. They don't really, you know, do stuff that doesn't really involve their job if they have those certain operators. So let's talk about Defender. So with a Defender, you're obviously are going to be a roamer, an objective player, or you're going to be a mix of both. So I, what I mean by that, if you guys are, for example, playing a Valkyrie. Valkyrie usually is a roamer but she comes back after a while since she has a c4 she can deny a plant and she can all she can do all of that good stuff and on the other hand you also have a jaeger a jaeger goes out and roams for the whole time he just wastes time he barely comes back to objective he comes back to objective great but you're just wasting time with the jaeger also with the vigil caviera and all those guys you just are going to try you guys are just going to try to waste as much time as possible and that should be your end goal but then you also have the objective players you call them anchors so what you for example anchors are dock Rook, uh, then we have Echo, but we already said Echo, you shouldn't play him. Okay, so for those operators, you guys are just gonna try to stay alive in the objective because trust me, there's nothing worse than having people die in the objective and just having to rush back. So you guys are gonna sit back, try to hold tight angles, and try not to get picked off because once someone dies in objective, the other team will recognize that and it will start ignoring the roamers and will go for the objective. And once they push, rush the objective with like four people in a row and there's only one person on site, it's over. Like you guys are pretty much going to die. But you guys are also going to have to weigh the situation out. So if you guys have too many roamers, so if you guys, okay, one guy plays Jaeger, one guy plays Vigil and the other guy plays Caviera. Obviously, you guys don't want to play pulls to go also roaming with them you guys are gonna want to play an operator for example like smoke dock mute to really try to hold down the objective because once you guys have more than three roamers people will start just rushing the objective and you guys will lose every single game if you guys have more than three roamers so the max should 100 be three roamers and you guys should weigh it out like you guys have to tell by yourself because if you guys are like oh i'm always i'm a roamer main i can't play anything else except the roaming well then you're just being silly and you guys are most likely gonna lose every single game so weigh out the situation if there's too many roamers in your team stay in objective if there are too many players an objective go roam there should never be more than four players on objective if there are more than four players on objective in most objectives like on most maps then you guys are most likely are just going to get picked off one by one because it's not possible to be uh, it's not possible to have five players in the objective just sitting like sitting down and holding up like corners that's just not going to work dude so be sure to weigh out the situation you guys are pretty much good for the entire round
So last but not least, we are going to be talking about strats and getting killed. So this is probably the most important part because when you're solo queuing, you obviously want to go for, you know, those frags and to really get your team up there. Because, I mean, doing your job is very important, trust me. But getting those frags is also very important because once people start doing their job, people will rotate around and you can get those easy kills when you're playing a frag operator so the way you guys are going to get those easy kills is uh first drone uh, your first couple of rooms so you guys can push in and get control of those rooms once you guys are pretty close to the objective but not too close so the other team knows where you are so you guys are going to push up and just hold rotations so you know those players that rotate out of the objective or are rotating back to the objective or even the the guys that are just roaming around they are always rotating and trust me when you guys are gonna play the game more and more you guys will start to know where people will rotate a lot more so you guys can do your own little strats for every single map when you're attacking so you guys can just push in run in a certain corner and just hold an angle and once you guys are holding that angle people will start coming you know running around but don't hold that angle for too long because there are obviously uh, times where you are not gonna get those uh, lucky rotations and all that then it's time to rotate always change it around be sure to know don't hold an angle for longer than 30 seconds even 20 seconds is too long like just hold it if no one's rotating drone again push up hold an angle and that's how you guys are gonna get most of your kills once your you know your team starts to get frags people will get more nervous they will rotate around and that's how you guys are gonna get your frags and everything will work together and trust me you guys are gonna get your kills very easily so yeah that's for attackers but for defenders it's a different story for defenders let's say you guys are a roamer you guys are gonna go out and obviously waste as much time as possible but one thing that i would recommend if they don't drone you be aggressive try to let them know that you're there but don't just shoot random bullets at random walls so they can hear you no so if they don't know that you're roaming, try to sneak up on them, get one frag, maybe even two, and run off. Because then they get nervous. They will start getting nervous and they will push you instead of the objective. And trust me, if you waste more than one and a half or even two minutes in a round, th that will be a huge advantage to your team. And you guys are most likely going to win that round. But the objective players, the anchors that are playing in objective, they're going to have a different role because those guys are going to hold tight pixel peaks, try to get those people that are peeking them. Because once people start peeking you, you guys can get those easy frags from objective because they are, uh, you know, peeking you and they have to cover way more angles than you have to do because if you're just aiming out of the window but one thing that you guys do have to know is don't over peek don't overdo it because people will start pre-aiming angles because they know okay this guy is peeking a lot i'll pre-aim this angle and this guy will most likely peek me so if you guys know that a guy is holding an angle on you don't peek him you guys are an objective you guys are safe you're wasting their time trust me time is on your side time is your friend you guys have to waste as much time as possible and make them rush in the last couple of seconds because if they rush in the last couple of sections uh because if they rush in the last couple of seconds ella traps uh frost traps legion trap everything will start going off and those guys are gonna have so much trouble especially nowadays to really get into that objective and try to you know get that kill on you especially if they're stunned or anything like that they'll have so much trouble even if they're stuck in barbed wire you're gonna have the advantage on them because their movement is gonna be so slow and you guys are most likely gonna get that kill okay since we're at the end of the video i'm gonna ask you guys the two questions now so the first question is going to be which of these operators here is most suited for this lineup right here And the correct answer is smoke. So the reason why smoke is the best option right here is because we obviously already have a roamer. We have two mixed players, which is Valkyrie and Pulse. And we have a Rook with an ACOG. So we need another objective player. So we can either pick A or C, which is Doc or Smoke. But we already have an ACOG, so we don't really need another one. That would be way too overkill. And Smoke is just one of the best... Uh, objective operators and he probably outshines every single ACOG player in this entire game so smoke is definitely the best option for this 
lineup right here. All right, I want to give you guys one more bonus tip, which is uh, weighing out your odds. So if you if the odds are against you, don't do something risky. If the odds are on your side, do something risky. I put this at the end because once you guys get game sense, once you guys understand the game way more, you guys are going to know uh, when the odds are on your side or against you. But you guys will already know since like from the beginning on when like once you say like, oh my God, I probably shouldn't be doing this. Don't do it. And yeah, so that's the only thing I wanted to tell you guys. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys watched the whole thing. Type an exclamation mark and just to let me know because I'm kind of curious how many people watch this thing all the way through. So if you guys did enjoy it, please like and subscribe. I would very much appreciate it. And yeah, that's going to be it from me. So have a beautiful day, night, evening, whatever it is for you guys. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out.